Um, I wanted to share with you today a uh, thing I figured out with a PVC pipe. Now, I know I'm the only person that's thought of this, um, and there's actually quite a lot of this stuff out now. Um, but years ago, like about five years ago, um, I remember watching uh, somebody do dislocates with a stick or something like that in gymnastics. And I was like, oh, okay, that's really cool. And so I started doing them too. Um, and then I kind of started just messing around because that's what I normally do with ideas. And um, this is the way my brain is. And uh, I started making other things up with PVC too. Now, the funny thing is that nowadays, a lot of stuff I'm seeing uh, is stuff that I kind of did in the past. And I'm not taking credit for it. Obviously, you didn't learn it from me because it, opened, it figured out a completely different area. And I know there's other people that have experimented this with this stuff too. But I just want to show you some stuff you can do with a PVC pipe um, or a stick or a, a staff or anything like that. Just make sure it's strong enough. Uh, this is Schedule 40. Uh, PVC three quarter inch and um, costs like two bucks. You can get like a whole 12 and 12 foot of piece of it and have two of them. Um, but the first thing I want to show you is uh, some stuff that helps open up your lats and your pectorals uh, because that's an area I've had trouble with with um, my uh, with my bridges. And so uh, I was trying to figure out what it was that uh, recently why my bridges have gotten a lot better. And I was thinking about it, thinking about it, and then I remembered, oh yeah, I did this weird thing, I did this thing with PVC pipes that I haven't done in a long time. And suddenly my lats had opened up again. So I want to share with you that, that stuff that I do, and uh, hopefully it helps you out as well. So the first thing, uh, these are circles, and I've seen a lot of crossfitters do this before they do any overhead um, squatting or overhead pressing or anything. And all this is, is you grab a little wide, and you go around in a circle behind and then a circle behind. And you just go through circles like that. So you're going up and over and up and over. Now you can get really critical with this and say, okay, I have to keep one arm down to my side while the other one goes around. Um, what I like to do is I just try to get through the motion. If I have to bend or twist kind of weird to do it, I'm okay with that. So I don't necessarily tell myself I have to stay facing forward. I allow myself to twist a little bit too because that also helps warm me up as well. So if you want to stay forward, you can stay forward. And if you want to twist a little bit, you can twist a little bit. Now, one thing you want to make sure you're doing with that is that you're keeping your elbows straight as best you can. Um, and you always want to try to go with the stretch. Never try to fight against it. I know that seems pretty common sense, but you don't want to, if it's too, just too hard for you, if you feel like you just can't maintain the straight elbows, then take it back a notch until you can. So I usually start out with a few rotations of that. I'll do the spacing sideways too, so you can see um, coming around the back here, and up and over the other side, and I'll face backward. Up and over, okay. So you have that. Now, immediately after doing that, then I go into doing uh, this locates. Now, you don't want to go crazy with these. I only do a few of them at a time. And I do more of a pausing motion instead of trying to just jam my shoulders together. Again, I'm not trying to go quick. I'm trying to go fairly slow and just open up as I go through it. So I reach up and over my head and I let my shoulders open up. And I'm actually pulling my shoulder blades together in the back. Okay? So I'm pulling them together so I give myself space. And I try to find the spot where I need the most work, and I kind of stay there a little bit, and I pass through it slowly, never going quick. Back up the other way. And as you feel yourself starting to open up, you can go deeper in and bring your hands closer in, a little bit at a time. Opening up, filling that stretch. And most of the time, right about here in the middle is where I like to stay at, because that's where I need the most work right in there, in that short range area, as I'm doing that. So I do that a few times through. And now these other ones are a little trickier, so you have to kind of pay a little better attention now. Um, I put the stab directly in front of me. I, so I'm grabbing it with my left arm right now, okay? If you were mirroring me, this would be your right arm. This is your left arm. I bring my other arm across the front 
And you can see it's on the outside of my arm. So I'm bringing it to the inside. And then I grab it like this. So what's going on here is I grabbed the uh, top of this I have grabbed the top of it and essentially I put myself kind of into not an arm bar but kind of a, uh, a wrestling move where I'm trying to lock my elbow in place and what I'm doing is I have it at 90 degrees so it has to be where my shoulder's at it's directly in front of it and my arm is at 90. If you change this try to turn it it's a little bit harder to do this and you don't feel the same stretch so I find that this at 90 works best. So I'm there, and then I grab low. The lower you grab, the more torque you get, more leverage you get, and then I pull out to the side. And you'll feel this as I do this right here. Okay, You're going to feel it like right around here. Okay, maybe some other spots for you, but that's where I feel it. Okay, And then if I also want to make sure that I'm not turning into it with my shoulder, that I'm staying level, I could also use my leg if I want to get a little more power into that. And I also have noticed that the more I bring it to kind of the middle side of my arm, it can kind of give me more leverage than if I have it directly at the elbow. Um, in fact, the further I bring it in, the more torque I can get on it versus back and forth. And it just varies. So, I mean, I can sometimes feel it better right here. Sometimes I go in the more middle, I feel it more. So you have that one, and you want to do this on both sides. I need this more on my right side than my left side, uh, especially when I'm doing like kitty to hing circles. I have a harder time getting over my right side. And since I've been doing these, I've been getting a better open position for this. So let's get the other side. Boom, boom, and 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and I pull it up. Um, you can also do kind of an active, not active stretch, but like a almost kind of a PNF kind of thing, where I contract against it and then relax back and forth, or you can go into it dynamically. Be patient with this. Go slow with this. Um, be careful with this, especially for someone who has really tight shoulders like me. So those are the first two, um, three actually, and then now the other one is very very similar. So I start in the middle again. I go here. Recently saw this one on an Omar Isaf video. Um, and so I'm just concluding it in here because I thought it was pretty good. I didn't think of this one, um, but it's part of the continuum of, of this specific thing. So from here, I'm going to open it up to the sides, and now it's at like a 90 degrees right there. And you can either put it up on something, like there's a little ledge right here. Okay, this is a little harder because it's a little too high for me. So I'm going to put it on a chair, a bar stool. So I'm here, put it up there, and whoop, it's a little slippery. There. So blah. now I have it there, and I can kind of get into place. The problem with this is that if your elbow is not down, it will slip out. So if it's up here, it's just going to slide out. Got to make sure your elbow is like right outside the shoulder here. And usually the best way I can get this to work in my easiest easiest way is to do this on the floor. So I just find it to be the easiest way. So I'm gonna put this yoga mat down so I get the kneel on the heart floor right now. But so I'd go here. Makes it a lot easier, like I said, to control. So now, okay. So now I'm here. It's on the floor and from here I can adjust a lot more so easier so I'll sit back until I feel that and the farther I push my like the more I push my the, the, the leverage comes up the more that comes up the more I'm going to feel it here and so if I pull back make sure that elbow is in line with the shoulder then I really get a nice extension back there on the other side now. Same thing here. Elbows out to the side. Okay. And then I'll come down with it. 
And again, I've been doing this now for about two weeks, um, really getting into it, and slowly, you know, like, not trying to do too much. And I don't actually do this type of stretch after my workouts. I do them before it, um, or my, before my hand balancing stuff, and it helps a lot. So here's one more, uh, and this one's a little bit trickier, so you grab it again just like I did before. And then, actually there's two more, but who cares. And then I bring it down to my side, so now it's more down to the side right here. I grab it with the other side and I just pull back. So go in there, and I'm kind of causing a, because of the elbows down at it, a degree right there, in that position I can pull this way and kind of get a little bit of openness in that direction. Um, and this one is kind of finicky, depends how, um, how much pressure you want to put into it. You can even push this against part, a wall or something, like that, and by turning into it, you can cause a little more openness. Because with the other arm, it becomes hard because of the, you have to pull on it and then your body has to turn. But if you have it against a wall, you can just twist and it does the work for you. Um, this is, when it starts getting down to here, you gotta start being extra careful too because it starts to, the torque down here and where the shoulder position is, um, is a little bit unstable. So you gotta be kind of mindful of that. This way now. Get that side as well. Um, again, I, one side of mine needs more work than the other, so this one is a little bit harder for me to feel the actual stretch in it, just because it's hard to pull it open. So there's that one, and then uh, the final one that I really use right now, and I know there's more with these, but these is what I have so far. Is I just put it behind me, I reach back, and then I grab it at the bottom here. Okay, and then all I'm doing is going to lift up. So I'm pulling my, pretty much pulling my hand up, and then I'm going to push downward. With my top arm, I push, and I go back and forth here. This kind of helps to open up the back area. So I'm feeling this now right up in here a little bit more. So I'm probably like a stretch in the deltoid area. Back and forth. Um, you can also go this way and pull down like that, but I don't feel that that works as well. Um, if anything, this just becomes a good tricep stretch, because when I do it right here, I feel it stretching in here. If I pull down, I can get a nice tricep stretch in there. Uh, but I don't really feel like it's helping me too much with the um, shoulder itself. Uh, let's get the other side. So again, I grab here, and then I pull up, and there we go. And again, coming here and pulling down, and I feel more of a tricep stretch. I want to go with this one. So there you have it, I uh, just wanted to show you these. I think they've really helped me out a lot with my uh, bridges, um, especially in my shoulders, um, and the pectorals as well. And uh, I just wanted to share them with you. Sorry that it took long to explain. Um, I don't really care. <laughs> Use it if you want to, if not, no worries. Um, hopefully I'll bring some more stuff like this to you in the future. You know, these things are kind of random. I'm more on Instagram these days. But, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Maybe you'll see something soon.